Hello everyone, I'm Andrea Kirsten Coleman from the Vision Impact Institute and we're coming to you live from the World Congress of Optometry Academy 2019 conference in Orlando, Florida. Today we're really excited to be able to catch up with Afua Atengasare, the 2019 Vision Impact Institute Fellow. The Zell Fellowship was established by the American Academy of Optometry Foundation to provide postdoctoral students who are pursuing an advanced degree in optometric research with industry recognition and monetary support to further their work. To date, over 420 William C. Zell Fellowships have been awarded since the inception of the program in 1949. Hello, Afwa. It's really great to be with you today. Thanks for setting aside some time during this conference to chat with us. I know it's a very busy schedule. My pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. I had a chance earlier this year to interview you for a blog when the fellowship recipients were announced. For our audience, tell us a bit about your background and how that inspired you to get involved in the vision space. So having lived in Papua New Guinea and Ghana, uh, it was very common to come across people with severe vision impairment in situations of destitution, begging for alms on the street. I also had extended family members that had severe vision impairment who were significantly dependent on um, other family members. And so this affected me personally. Um, in high school, I also came across the work of nonprofits such as uh, Unite for Sight that were providing sight saving treatments and initiatives in Ghana. And so this all came to, you know, it motivated me to pursue vision care. So I enrolled in the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in Kumasi. Ghana in 2003, and six years later, I graduated amongst the third batch of doctors of optometry to ever be churned out of a program in, in Ghana. So um, that's how it happened. Very interesting. So you have a master's in public health and a very strong interest in that subject. Where did that interest specifically come from? So practicing as an optometrist in Ghana, I came to the realization that most of the patients that come into the clinic belong to the middle class, just by the fact that there was a huge need amongst um, the lower lower classes. And so I just sort of piqued my interest. I was curious to find out why this was happening and sort of to try to figure out what possible solutions could be provided to increase access to care um, amongst um, people in Ghana. And so that led me to public health sciences. And so I enrolled in a public health program actually in, in the States at Harvard University. That's where it all began. So the research that you've done and will continue to do relates to health services. Explain to us uh, who don't know what that means and why it's important from a vision perspective to be researching that particular topic. Yeah, so health services research um, examines how people get access to care, the cost of the care, the outcomes that result from the care that they receive. And uh, the main goal of health services research is to identify the most effective ways of providing high quality care. Uh, so um, recently, I'm not sure if you've, if, you've, if you've heard, but the World Health Organization released the first world report on vision about two weeks ago. Um, and in that report, it states that at least one billion people worldwide have vision impairment that could have been prevented or that are yet to be detected. Um, the report uh, states um, limitations to access to eye care in low and middle income countries. And it describes the main drivers of these care as a result of issues of access. And so um, the organization calls for the integration of eye care services, and it also specifically mentions that there is a lack of health services research and implementation in the field of eye care, and it has a negative impact on the planning of eye care programs. So it was really an eye opening for me to see that, and that essentially draws attention to why it's important that we look at or practice eye care um, in the field of health services research. Right, a nice connection there between it the two. Is. So is there anything that has really surprised you from your research work so far? Um, yeah, I would say that um, the lack of awareness on the importance of um, optometry exams, especially amongst pediatric populations, has been a big surprise for me. And also the lack of research on the cost effectiveness of vision care initiatives. Um, again, referring to that report, uh, they acknowledged, again, the scarcity of health services um, research in the field. And so, yeah, I think that um, more needs to be done, more research within the health services research and public health sphere in the vision care space is, is needed. In our work, uh, we talk um, a lot about research being the foundation for all of our awareness and advocacy work. 
What is one challenge impacting vision care around the world that you think could be improved through more or even better research? Um, so I would say that the scarcity of economic analyses on the cost effectiveness of vision healthcare services and initiatives in children, um, and this could be improved by quantifying the impacts of eye and vision diseases on the quality of life. Um, so that data is, is really missing. And I think if we could just get an idea as to how much quantify that amount of impact that eye diseases are having on quality of life, it would be a starting point for a number of other really important studies, such as cost effectiveness analyses and other. So almost like a catalyst. Exactly. So having been, been at this conference for a few days, what has struck you as a key learning, either in a session or just talking to other people that are also attending? So the plenary session, which was um, two days ago, was a huge eye opener. It was really interesting um, listening to experts in the field, such as Dr. Kovin Nadu, on the highlights of the World Report, which again I uh, mentioned, um, particularly the need for horizontal as opposed to vertical programs. Um, that being that vertical programs tend to be short and medium term initiatives that have been successful in infectious eye diseases, but not so much on um, eye Eye care needs across the life course. So um, these vertical initiatives have failed to reduce health inequalities, which we agree is a, is a huge thing in vision care. And so horizontal initiatives are encouraged and there's a call for it to be integrated in various sectors, such as education, such so vision screening programs, for example, that are done within schools. So I think that was, was really good to hear that. How do you um, plan to use your fellowship to further your work? Currently, I'm conducting research on the utilization of vision care, and I'm looking at the impacts that socioeconomic status has on access to vision care in pediatric populations. I'm also looking at a cost-effectiveness analysis of vision screening um, initiatives. What this fellowship would really help me to do is to be able to disseminate those results, which is extremely important. What's the point of having research that just sits, sits right. on the shelf, right? So being able to disseminate that amongst stakeholders at conferences and uh, research publications is what I would really be able to do now that I have the Azel Fellowship. And that touches on the awareness issue that you were just exactly, talking about. Exactly, yes. So if we were to fast forward to a fly in 10 years time, from a career perspective, what would you have liked to have achieved in the vision space? Okay, 10 years from now. Um, well, I would hope to have had an impact on vision health care and delivery for program planning and implementation in countries, uh, both locally and abroad, um, specifically though, to be able to um, influence the provision of much needed health services research in vulnerable populations and collaboration with decision makers. What advice would you give to uh, any other students who are considering the field of vision? I think it's an amazing field um, and with the recent attention that's come to come to life through this world, a report on the importance of health services research and public health research. I think it's a great time for individuals to consider vision care within, especially within the public health and health services research space. So I've personally found it immensely rewarding being in vision care, especially within vulnerable populations like children. So I would say this is a perfect time. And if you were to have the opportunity to um, share with a health minister or a policymaker, what advice would you give to them in terms of making changes in their countries? Well, I'd say that one of the biggest investments that they could make in healthcare uh, would be to ensure optimal vision of their people, because this would impact productivity positively um, and quality of life of the people. If you have a healthy population, a, product, a productive population, that goes a, a long way to improve the, you know, healthy economic, the economics of the community. So I would say that they'd really need to invest in good vision healthcare across their populace. It's a very good note to end on. Thank you so much for your time today, Afwa. We wish you all the best with your future research and plans and congratulations once again on a very well-deserved fellowship. Thank you for the opportunity, and I'm extremely grateful to the Vision Impact Institute for funding the SL Fellowship that I received. I'm also very grateful to my supervisors and my research team at the University of Toronto, the doctors Agnes Wong and Daphne Mora. Thank you. And thank you to you, our listeners. We appreciate you taking the time to listen today, and we very much look forward to bringing you another conversation very soon. Until then, you can find us online at visionimpactinstitute.org and on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Take care.